I was in Hong Kong the other day, and I discovered something. No Chinese there will start building his house until his fortune teller has picked the spot for him. Sometimes that spot happens to coincide with a, with a busy intersection or the office of the bank president, which of course necessitates a certain amount of readjustment. But fortune telling has always been with us. The early Egyptians indulged in it, judging by all those conflicting dates for the end of the world, which they hacked into the side of the pyramids. And in the Middle Ages, no self-respecting king would fail to get the green light from his soothsayer before joining battle or getting married. Not, of course, that there's sometimes too much difference between those two, but personally, I've always found it a little hard to understand why fortune tellers have to work for a living at all. Because if they can really see what's coming, it seems to me that all they would need is a nice, comfortable chair at the nearest racetrack and a large black bag in which to haul away the profits. But they're a fascinating bunch of people, and no fun fair should ever be without them. Which brings us to tonight's story and to Don Taylor, who I'm happy to say is the star of it. Fortune-telling cookie. I'll tell you about this after the show. Look at him come down. Just like a winner at Hialeah. You ever been at Hialeah? It's a racetrack, it's in Miami. How would you like to go? I mean, on a roller coaster. Hey, hold it, your head. Don't move it, that's it. You're in the movies, aren't you? <laughs> that's where I saw you. I knew I'd seen you before. Your name is, uh, is Joanne Woodward. I guess right, huh? Look, mister, why don't you go away? Well, what do you mean, honey? I'm just trying to do you a favor. My name's Steve. What do you say? You want to go on a roller coaster? Just you and me. What is it? Say, honey, you want to go? I asked you. Officer. Make sure there ain't been no dear John. The crystal ball says she will be yours. I see no more. Well, okay, lady. I hope you're right. Well, where did you come from? Oh, here and there. Well, aren't you glad to see me, Annie Cecile? What are you doing here? You're in trouble? Now, what makes you think I'd be in trouble, Auntie? That's your usual state. Now, Auntie. Don't Auntie me. Who's this? Oh, his name is Bobo. Bobo the Clown. 
<laughs> a good and loyal friend. I found him in a carnival. Jail, more likely. What police department are you running away from now? Well, we're not running away from anyone, Auntie. I mean Aunt Cecile. We merely came to town to transact a little business, and now that we're here, we thought we might impose ourselves upon your gracious hospitality. I knew it. For how long? Well, I don't know exactly. You're the fortune teller. You ought to be able to tell us how long that'll be. I can. Never. And without even a crystal ball. I don't have to have a crystal ball to tell your fortune. And Cecile, I'm under the distinct impression that you're not happy to see us, that you won't enjoy every minute of our stay here. Stephen, you're a mind reader. Well, I've been thinking, and I've decided we can leave immediately, if you will... What? Uh, Loan us a small sum. You see, we're temporarily without any funds. How much? hundred bucks. Oh, you're crazy. Fifty? No. Okay, we'll stay. Bobo, well, well, I think I'll sleep right here. Where would you like to? I'll give you twenty-five. It's a deal. All right. Where are you going? To borrow the money. Don't suppose I leave that amount lying around here, do you? And listen, if any customers come while I'm out, keep them here. I won't be long. Well, Bobo? Like we're gonna stay here long after all, does it? Except 25 bucks is gonna last us very long, is it? Hmm. Maybe we could take half of it and put it on a winner over at Santa Anita. Huh? You know what that is, Bobo? That's the poor man's toboggan. <laughs> oh boy, will you look at all this junk? Look. Well, Bobo? How would you like to have your fortune told? Hmm? Uh, you understand, it's just for laughs. <laughs> oh, me, I didn't know Annie got customers like that. May I help you? I'd like to see Madame Cecile. Oh, I'm afraid you'll have to wait for a few minutes. Oh, is she busy? She's out. Come on, Barb, let's go. Forget about it. No, wait. Uh, don't go, miss. She'll be right back. Oh, wait a minute. Hold on. I mean, don't move your head. No, no, wait. In the movies, aren't you? Who, me? No. I could have sworn you were Elizabeth Taylor. You look just like her. It's remarkable. What? Your eyes. Remarkable. Barb, let's go. In a minute, Jane. I look into your eyes and I can see your whole life. Past, present, and future. Everything. Your innermost thoughts. Are you clairvoyant? Well, in a way, yes. You see, I'm here visiting Madame Cecile from New Orleans. I've heard so much about her. Well, you can take this for what it's worth, but I happen to have developed Madame Cecile's power. I would be honored to be of service. Please. Oh, excuse me. Uh, won't you sit down? Barbara. Jane thinks you're foolish to come here. I'm afraid she doesn't believe in this sort of thing, but then she's shy. You, on the other hand, you crave excitement. You like to take a chance. What was that? Excitement. had a pleasant life. You've never worked. Been in school, traveling. I see a ship, a large ship, foreign countries, newspaper headlines, a young man. Alfred. Yeah. I see you coming home. Ah, oh, well, that's all in the past. Now I see you in a car, a convertible, a new convertible. I just got one last week. Red. Lipstick red. Now you drive fast, though. Too fast. You've been stopped by the police. I got four tickets already. Huh. I see an accident. This week your car will be smashed, completely demolished. Yeah, but you'll be all right. You'll escape injury. Are you sure? Huh. Yeah, you get a new car. Your father's angry, but he'll forget he loves you very much. 
What else? Ah, oh, I see. Uh, uh, robbery. Ah, one of your prized possessions will be stolen. Uh, this, uh, this ring will be stolen. <laughs> you see? I know all about you. Can you tell me about my love life? Well, there are many men in love with you. Who will I marry? <laughs> and I see. What's the matter? I can't continue. I'm sorry. Why not? Well, I saw something and... Well, please tell me. No, I don't want to hurt you. Well, now, don't leave me dangling like this. Well, what do you see? The man you intend to marry is going to be killed. <laughs> but I'm not in love with anyone. I mean, there are lots of fellas, but uh, no one to marry. But you will. You know this man and you'll fall in love with him like you never thought you could. And the minute you decide to marry him, he's going to be killed. How will he be killed? It'll be a violent death. Can you tell me his name? No, his face is in the shadow. You're trembling. I envy him, Barbara, to have the love of a girl like you. But he's going to die. Well, sooner or later, everybody has to. I think I better go now, Mr. Call me Steve. Will I see you again? How was it? What did he say? Barb, you're white. What happened? How much do I owe you? My pleasure. Bye, Steve. So long, Barbara. Why did you let that girl get away? I told you I'd be right back. She looks familiar. Why, Auntie, I'm surprised at you. Don't you ever read the newspapers? That girl's had a picture on more front pages than the president. That was Barbara Nelson. The heiress? Was she coming back? I think so. I told her fortune. You what? Fifty bucks. But I thought you didn't believe in Do fortune. Do you have to believe in all this jazz to tell a fortune? <laughs> I'll tell you this, though. She believed it. <laughs> all the people who come here believe it. They want to believe it. Suppose my predictions came true. What's going on in that miserable little head of yours? I'd have an heiress eating right out of my hand. <laughs> but first, your predictions have to come true. They will. A couple of them, anyway. I'll make them. Somehow. Bobo. Now, it's very easy, but listen carefully. I don't want any mistakes. I predicted that two things were going to happen to Barbara Nelson this week. First, that she was going to have an accident in her car. Now, you're going to see that that accident takes place, Bobo. How? You're going to run into it. I haven't got, got a car. I know. But Annie Cecile is going to give you 75 bucks. Don't Auntie me. The 25 she owes us and the 50 I just earned. Listen, I... Quiet! Quiet! Now, you take the 75 bucks and you go and buy yourself a jalopy. But before you do that, I want you to go to her house and swipe a ring. A ring that she wears on the little finger of her left hand. It's a gold ring. I swipe it. Swipe it. It'll be a cinch for you. I don't know where she lives. Her father's a millionaire. Look it up. Okay, Steve. All right, get going and get the lay of the land. And as soon as you clip that ring, report back here. Right? <laughs> you know, Annie, you should thank your lucky stars I came here. Because when Barbara Nelson finds my predictions are true, she'll come back. Then you can leave this miserable hutch and set yourself up where every star in Hollywood will be the path to your crystal ball. Good luck, 
back, Bobo. <laughs> Mr. Matoski, you are ultra sensitive. Remember, beware of a red headed woman when the moon is full. Come back and see me every week. Goodbye, Mr. McCloskey. This happens to be a place of business where I earn my living, not a hotel room. I knew I should. Someday the roof will fall in. You've been lying there almost three days. How much longer? I'm waiting for Bobo. You'll never see him again. Hmm, I don't know. He probably swiped the ring and then forgot where to bring it. Or hopped it and got drunk. He sure left you out on a limb. Ah, uh, why don't you lay off? What do you want from me? Get out. All right, all right. Now! All right! Barbara. Oh, Steve, oh, I'm so glad you're here. I didn't think it was possible. What? Well, I've always been sort of skeptical of fortune-telling. Barbara, I think you should meet Madame Cecile, Miss Nelson. Mm -hmm. Oh, how do you do? But anyway, when I left here, I thought about what you said. And of course, I was sure that none of your predictions would take place. Yeah? But they did. Everything. Even about the car. I had an accident, and I was lucky to escape with only a few bruises. And then this morning when I woke up, my ring was gone. You see, I always take my ring off every night and place it on the little table beside my bed. And this morning it was gone? Yes. But now I'm worried. What about? Well, the other prediction, don't you remember? You said that I was going to fall head over heels in love, and then he was going to be killed. Oh, that. Oh, well, I wouldn't worry about that, Barbara. But it was true, wasn't it? That isn't exactly what I meant. I mean, it doesn't have to happen that way. Man doesn't always have to be the victim of his fate. He, he, he can be the master. If he understands his lifeline and has the will to overcome all obstacles. If he has the understanding, Barbara, and the will, he can change the course of his destiny. Do you think so? Oh, sure, sure. It's a highly complex philosophical concept. and It's not too easy to understand at first, but I'll be glad to explain it to you. I'll tell you what let's do. Let's take a walk and I'll tell you all about it. Goodbye, madame. Bye. But you know, we haven't discussed fate or destiny once. No, we haven't. Are you sure your predictions can be changed? Oh, sure. Don't worry about it, Byron. No. Well, your other predictions came true so far. Hey, you know what, let's do? Let's take a ride on the roller coaster, no, huh? I haven't got time. But listen, would you like to come to my house for dinner tomorrow? Huh? I'd like you to meet my family. Why? So you show them a fortune teller? Maybe. Will I see you tomorrow? What time? About seven. It'll be a year till then. I'll be there, Dom. like having your insides plucked right out of you. Like you got wings. I mean, you feel it all the way through. What do you say? If you don't get out of here, I'm gonna call a cop. Oh, don't be that way, honey. Come on. Officer. Officer. Hey! 
Don't stand up. But did they catch you stealing the ring? I didn't steal anything. I was standing outside her house looking the place over when this policeman came along and arrested me. For loitering, he said. They kept me locked up all alone for 72 hours, until just now. You didn't follow any of Steve's instructions then? I didn't have a chance to. So far, all his predictions have come true. They did? What's the matter? He predicted that the man Barbara would fall in love with would be killed. know me so how can she love me she does car jumped the tracks. Was anyone hurt? Just one passenger. He was killed. That was the fellow that was hanging around your place the last few days. Steve. Your relative? Sort of. No kidding. Was he a fortune teller too? The best, Jerry. <laughs> 